It is the most talked about past episode of Daring Abroad, the most liked and the most watched on YouTube. Yes, the story of Willy Kathurima, Tswana cattle farmer of Kenyan origin in Botswana. And I'm back at his farm three years later. Find out what has changed. There has been awareness of the market. Demand has been astronomical. We've had people call us from as far as America, China, and all that. Because of the exposure you give us, we've also improved on the, our cattle in terms of breeding. We have improved on the weights and, and the condition of the cattle. We've also done quite a bit of uh, of uh, feeding and supply improvement. We now plant our own feed, which is basically maize and um, sorghum and uh, sunflower and lab lab. Katsurima sells meat to the Botswana Meat Commission. What we now take, say, to a feedlot is probably 300 kg to BMC we do. We have done 400 kg, 450 of live weight. You deliver like what quantities, uh, either per month or per year? What, what's your we do uh, quarterly sales. So we do about 300 in three months of that. Other than that, we are also selling winner heifers or heifers themselves. We are selling mothers. We have also been able to sell cow cows. We don't keep cows for more than six years. Inside. As we walk around, yes. what would be the price of this one? This is a champion cow. Mm a cementer with a bit of uh, Austin or Hereford, Hereford and it is pregnant. This has been inseminated, it's pregnant. I would sell this for 15,000 pula, mm -hmm. which is equivalent to 150,000 shillings. Kenya shillings? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. The main breeds on Kathurima's farm are Simental and Brahma. Others are Charolais and Sussex. Right now in total you have? Well, as a Motswana, we don't talk about numbers. <laughs> numbers. You know, it's, 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 <laughs> our culture doesn't allow me. But from a commercial perspective, yes. um, those which are resident in this farm, mm -hmm. which we are not selling, mm -hmm. is about 650 breeding stock. And then, of course, mm -hmm. we've got about 200, uh -huh. which should be going out in the next uh, month or so. Yeah. Mr. Tsepo, how is it? Sharp, sharp. Sharp, sharp, Baba. Sharp, sharp. Katsurima is a land economist and he is actively involved in setting up projects geared towards improving livelihoods from the property sector to farming. He has been hosting visitors from various parts of the world, including Kenyan leaders, for what is now commonly known as benchmarking. We've had county governors, we've had MCSs, members of parliament, individual uh, business people who want to either get into cattle or who want to see cattle. That's agritourism. I also learn from them because there are systems there. I've sat and listened, not just me, with my colleagues in these farm workers, my family, and we have implemented some of the systems that they have uh, discussed with us. So we're borrowing from each other, each other. Kenya and Botswana borrowing. And when I go back to yeah. Kenya, mm. other than being a celebrity, <laughs> because of you, I do visit some of them, of course. We become friends, social media, and uh, business relationships have been built out of that. Uh -huh. Kathurima says one big lesson other countries can learn from Botswana is traceability of livestock. Botswana is at a very advanced level of managing stock theft. It's, it's incredible how through tracing. Through tracing, yes. traceability, How and also the policing aspect mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. And people awareness. You know, we formed committees, stock theft 
neighborhood committees where my workers in the farm are able to report an incidence by suspicion or otherwise. And the police, who are not very far from here, they are camping all over the place, will be able to react within 10 minutes there then. Mm -hmm. The neighborhood should have neighborhood watch, they should have police services available within a short distance, a mobile or telephony, whichever way, I mean these days cell phone. Mm -hmm. We are connected, literally, internet, everything else. Not just this farm, literally every other farm, even traditional kettle posts. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I think Kenya and other countries can borrow from, the way we manage. And, and the issue uh, of standards. And standards, and the traceability, uh, the, 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 the kind of arrangement that we've done. I mean, when you look at that animal, mm. for instance, yeah. or any other, you see all of them are tagged. They're tagged there. What you see on the tag there is in the government server system. Yes, server system. Yes. Is it electronic? It is electronic. Uh -huh. So how does it work? When we sell, yeah. we've got to invite the police mm. to come and issue a movement permit. Mm -hmm. And whoever is moving has to be registered. We've got to invite the veterinary to also come and issue and make sure that the, the records are in the government mm. system electronically. It is done from the farm. And by the way, it is not only a EU or a registered farm like this one. Even in the cattle post. These days we do all that. That is a policy that you cannot run away from. So I cannot move this animal to another farm mm. or to some place somewhere, some slaughter or butchery or whatever it is, before there is the police and the administrative aspect of the animal, which is the veterinary services and the livestock issues, and also myself, I've got to be able to be cleared. I got to have a card. Mm. You know, I can show you that. We carry it, it's like registration card. Mm. That is part of my registration. And I cannot give my worker like him to mm. go and sell my kettle. I can do it with an affidavit mm -hmm. uh, from the police and I got to put my uh, uh, registration card which is commissioned mm -hmm. by an, a commission of oaths, yes. either through the police or mom office. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot. And, and, and uh, uh, if, about those if, that are roaming or not roaming or free range? Even them, they are supposed to be tagged. tagged. They, have got, um, uh, they have got a brand mm -hmm. and identification. If it doesn't have and it gets lost, then it's that's a government property. Mm -hmm. Generally, what you see here, our mill cattle, most of them will sell as uh, all ma these are mature male booze. Cattle. Yes, these are all mill cattle. Kathurima has invested in other sectors of agriculture. We now move to horticulture. Hello, gentlemen. Ah, Melara. Are you doing? Ah, hey. Ah, why are you doing? Hey, 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 Cattle have to take time, eight, nine months, just like humans, to calve. It takes time for them to, to, to grow, to take to the markets. Now, I realize that the opportunities for us to have an income stream from January to December, you need to diversify. We had opportunities to buy land, and this is what we've done. We've also gone into small stock, and sheep and goats. We've also gone into a cereal production of maize and related uh, things.
we are doing beetroot there. Yes. We are, we are doing there. watermelon. Mm. We are doing also um, a bit. We're gonna do a bit of uh, onions. Mm -hmm. All right, off season, mm -hmm. so that in case there is a failure or there is a failure of harvest in any given time, mm -hmm. that can give us a buffer. Okay. It can give us a boost. What's your biggest challenge? Disease. Disease. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh, mainly on tomato is very sensitive. Mm. The cost of inputs, chemicals, it's very expensive. The fertilizers are very expensive. So really, the biggest challenge is management of the whole of that spectrum. Our market is large. Uh, Botswana now, uh, we've realized that we can actually do without interventions from outside the country. Mm. Uh, we've been importing most of the horticultural products. But with setups like these, with a lot of government intervention and persuasion, the government has, in most cases, decided to close borders for, say, the rest of the countries around to bring in a product. So for Willy Kasurima, it's all systems go for diversification to make it big in farming in a country where climatic conditions may not be that favorable for farming but he believes it can be done. For Daring Abroad, I'm Alex Chamada in Botswana.